Hello and welcome. Today we're working on future value in Excel or the FV function in Excel. So let's get started. We've got some examples and I'm going to do in a template at the very end. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills. So time value of money is also called financial functions in Excel. So you can look up things like financial functions, Excel, or time value of money. And the idea of time value of money is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future because of inflation and interest. Now I have several videos out on time value of money. You can see those. I'll put those in the link below. But today's video is on future value. So let's just run through the five functions that we need to know. The future value is the lump sum at the end of the problem, what we think it might grow to. The present value, or the PV, is the lump sum or a single amount at the beginning of the problem. Payment is a stream of payments. They could be plus or minus. We'll show how to handle those. That's also called an annuity. And then the rate, now Excel uses the periodic rate. We'll talk about the annual interest rate and convert to a periodic rate. The last one is the number of periods, and this would be years or half years or quarters or months. We'll show how that works also. Just a little note here, present value and future value are opposites. They cannot be the same sign. So in this video, and I recommend that you're going to use present value as negative and future value as positive. The idea being we're paying present value, so it's a cash outflow, and we're receiving future value, which is a cash inflow. That's why it's positive. All right, so let's start with our very first problem. Here's what I've done. I've set up a little template. I'll show you how this works. Let me get rid of all this. And so we have an account that has a $5,000 balance. The account grows for eight years at 10% interest. What is the future value of this account or what's the ending balance of this account? Same thing. Well, if it doesn't say, we're going to assume that the periods per year is one. It has to say a word like semi-annually or quarterly or monthly. It doesn't say that. So we're going to assume one period per year. And it also, it doesn't really matter on this one because there's no payments. And so Excel calls it type. If the payments happen at the end of the period, we put a zero. If the payments happen at the beginning of the period, we put a one. There's no payments, but we're going to assume, the normal assumption is we assume uh, payments happen at the end of the period. Here, they'd have to say payments happen at the beginning. They have to use that word or, or say something very, very similar. All right, so what about the number of periods? I'm going to get in the habit of doing this because this is annual, but I'm going to multiply the years times the number of periods per year. So the account grows at 8%, so I'm going to take 8 and I'm going to multiply that 8 times the number of periods, which is 1, which still gives me 8. But I'm going to get in the habit of doing that, so we're going to solve for all future problems. The annual interest rate, I'm going to put in 10%. Now remember, we're going to use a periodic rate. The present value is $5,000. Now, we need to put in a negative number. So our future value will be positive. We're paying 5,000 and we're waiting eight years and then we're gonna receive the future value is the idea. Now there's no payment going on here because it would say we're adding to the account or subtracting from the account. And so what is our future value? Well, let me build the formula here with the formula builder. So I'd hit the FX function. And so what we have, we're going to look for future value, FV. So the rate is going to be 10%. Now I'm going to divide by the number of periods. I'm going to get in that habit, and I recommend you do also. The number of periods is going to be 8. The payment is going to be 0 here. The present value is 5,000. Now that's already negative, so our answer will be positive. And the payments happen at the end of the period, so the type is going to be zero. You see how we have all this laid out just the way Excel needs it. So I'm going to hit done, and so what happens is this is the single, the, the future value of a single amount, a lump sum. The future value says, look, if we invested 5000 and it grew for eight years at 10% interest, then we would have $10,717.94. So 
here is what the formula looks like. I'm using this. If we want to go back and edit this, we certainly can. We have the rate, the number of periods, the payment, the present value, and the type is zero. All right, so I'm going to do this every time, just changing, adding complexity to the problem, and then at the very end, we'll do a template. All right, the next one we're going to do is the future value of an annuity. So future value of a stream of payments. An investor saves $1,000 quarterly, or every three months, right, in an account for seven years. The account earns 9%. What is the ending balance of the account? Well, our periods per year is going to be four. The payments happen at the end of the period. The number of periods are going to be, well, seven times four. So we're talking about 28 quarters, not just seven years. The annual interest rate is going to be 9%. The present value is zero. We didn't start with anything, but we're putting in $1,000. We need to make this a negative 1,000 so our future value com comes out to be positive. So we need to make this a negative number, and our future value then is going to be what? Well, let me use the formula builder. So future value is going to be the rate of 9%. That's the annual rate. It needs to be a periodic rate. And Excel reminds you it's the interest rate per period. For example, 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. So we're going to do the 9% divided by 4. The number of periods is 28. We already have that converted to periods. The payment is going to be negative 1,000. The present value is 0 and the payments happen at the end of the period. And so what is our calculated amount? Our future value is going to be 38424 So what happens is we put in $1,000 every three months. We did it quarterly for seven years, so 28 payments of $1,000 each. But our account grew to 38000 We put in 28000 It grew to $38,424, so that is extra amount is the interest we have earned. All right, so that's the future value of an annuity. Our next one is going to be the future value of an account that we make periodic investments in. So, so this, the way we're doing this is we have an account that has a balance and we keep adding to that balance. So let's say an employee has a retirement account. In, in the United States, it's called a 401k is a typical retirement account. And that account has a balance of 3500 The employee and maybe the employer matches some, saves a total of $700 each month for 30 years. The account can earn 8.5%. And what is the ending balance of the account? Now, I'm intentionally changing language a little bit. Sometimes they don't ask for what is the future value, right? They might say, what is the ending balance? And you have to know, hey, that's future value. So the periods per year... This is going to be monthly payment, so it's going to be periods per year is 12 periods per year. It looks like the employee puts money in at the end of the month, so we'll put zero as the end of the month. The number of periods. Now, you're tempted to just put 30 and keep going, but remember, it's monthly, so it's going to be 30 times 12, so that's 360 is the number of months. The annual interest rate we're going to put in is 8.5%, so 8.5%. The present value is the beginning amount. So I'm going to put negative 3,500. And I need to put in negative 700 as the payment. So we're out of our pocket came 3,500, and out of our pocket came 700 each month. And for the chance to receive a future amount, whatever that amount comes out to be. And we'll calculate this in just a second. So this needs to be negative and negative. So the future value is going to be, I'm going to use my formula builder, fx. So future value is going to be the rate of 8.5% divided by 12. That's important. So the number of periods is 360. The payment is going to be 700 each month. The present value is 3,500 each month. The payments happen at the end of the period, so that's going to be a zero. So look at here, we've got almost $1.2 million. 
see a little bit invested every month over a long period of time gets to be a huge amount. This is the time value of money. So they started with 3500 in the account. They said, well, that's not very much. But they kept adding every month $700, and that account grew to $1,199,917. All right. So let's do the last one, which is the future value of an account with periodic withdrawals. So this is the same type of account, except instead of adding money to it, you're withdrawing money every month or whatever. So let's say somebody has retired. They're a retiree. They have an account with 1,300,000 balance. The retiree withdraws $4,500 at the beginning of each month for 10 years. The account earns 7%. What's the ending balance? Now, this is a typical problem. People say, well, I have, have money invested. What if I withdraw every month? How long will my money last? Or will it still continue to grow? Well, we have 12 periods per year, and it says beginning of each month, so we need to put a one here, beginning, the number of periods, we're gonna to try to uh, withdraw for 10 years. Let's see if that works. So we'll take 10 years times 12, and that's gonna be 120 months, right? So the annual interest rate is 7%. The present value is 1,300,000. We're going to type in a negative 1,300,000. Now, what do we do about the payment? I made a little note here. If it's an investment, then it comes out of our pocket into the account. So we put a negative. But this is a withdrawal from the account into our pocket moves from the retirement account into our checking account, maybe. So we're going to put a positive 4500 So this is going to make the account go down. It's opposite sign. So this is a plus. So here, in this case, we need to have negative and plus, and then the future value is going to be a positive number. All right, what we can do here, let me type in the, the future value formula. You can use the formula builder just fine, but let me show you another way to do it. FV, start parentheses. The rate is going to be 7% divided by 12. The number of periods is going to be 120. The payment is 4,500. It's already positive. We don't need to do anything here. Uh, the present value is 1,300,000. And the last one is payments at the end of the period, the beginning of the period. We're going to point to the 1, so it happens at the beginning of the period. And we'll hit Enter, we'll close that parentheses, hit Enter. So the future value, now watch, this account still has grown because we only took out 4,500 times 12, however much that is uh, for the year. And the interest of 7% still lets it grow a little bit more. Now, what if we took out zero? Well, that account would be 2.6 million. But we took out 4,500. We took out 4,500 every month. So that brings that account balance um, up to 1.8 million. It's at 1.3 and it still continues to grow. All right, let's do a future value template that solves all the problems uh, that we might have. Okay, so what we want to do is just set up a problem. Let's just make up a problem and let's figure out how to build uh, a template here. So let's say our periods per year is 12. We have 12 periods per year. The payments are going to happen at the end of the period. And let's say we have, um, we have an account balance of 1000 and we're going to put in $100 a month for 20 years. And we'll get an um, interest rate of, say, 8%. So let's say the number of periods is going to be, I think we said 10 years times 12, so 120. Uh, we have 8% as our annual interest. Uh, let's say our present value is 1,000. I need to make it negative 1,000. Let's say that we add $100, so we need to take minus 100. And what does it grow to? Well, 
let's do our future value. Go back to our formula builder. Future value is going to be the rate is 8% divided by 12. The number of periods is going to be 120. The payment is going to be 100. The present value is 1,000. The payments happen at the end of the period. Now, we have built this where it's going to solve every problem that we have. So this problem, how would we explain it? We would say, well, somebody has $1,000 and they invested $100 a month for, for 10 years. That is 120 payments of $100 each. So that account grows to $20,514. Well, we can change this. Let's say somebody has, uh, let's say they have $1,500,000, $1,500,000, and they're going to withdraw, let's say $5,000 every quarter, so it's quarterly, and it's going to be for 10 years. Well, how much would it grow to? Well, assuming 8%, let's make it 7%. If you had one and a half million and you withdrew 5,000 every quarter, okay, this is quarterly for 10 years, then the account still grows. Well, what if you say, look, I need more than 5,000 a quarter. I need to withdraw 20,000 each quarter. Well, that one and a half million will grow to 1.8 million, assuming 7%. What if you can only get 5% rate of return? Well you'll slowly start reducing that account balance. Over 10 years, it goes from present value of 1.5 million to future value of 1.435, 1,435,000. So this template, you can build a template that would solve every problem you have with time value of money. So let's do one more example on this. What if you only have, you have annual interest, periods per year, let's do it for 30 years, you can get, say, 8% interest. You can start with $20,000. You start with negative $20,000, and it grows to $201,000. So what you want to do is enter the present value as negative, future value comes out to be positive, and then any investment that you make into that account would be a negative, any withdrawal that you make is a positive. So this is a template you can use for any future value problems that you have. Hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.